Why is the Ark of Baal? Check this out. Why is the Ark of Baal being erected in Washington, D.C. during the last week of September 2018? Anybody know? Anybody know? It says here, a reproduction of the infamous Ark of Palmyra will be on display in Washington, D.C. from September 26th to September 30th. In, in ancient times, if you wanted to go to the Temple of Baal, which is a temple of Satan, in Palmyra, you had to pass through this Ark, and you would also pass through this Ark again on your way out. Well, the original Ark was destroyed by ISIS back in 2015, but it has been reproduced. And the reproduction has been periodically displayed at important locations around the globe. It has been pointed out that an ark is a gateway and many are concerned that erecting this ark may be an open invitation for the entity or entities that were originally associated with this ark. And the timing for putting this ark on display in Washington, D.C. is also very curious. The organization that is putting this ark on display in D.C. later this month says that it is a symbol of peace and resilience. Talking about the temple or the ark of Baal, the ark of the devil. Do you see the deception? Do you see the deception? The devil has now propagated a lie saying, listen, the Ark of Baal, the Ark of Satan is a symbol of peace and resilience, peace and strength, peace and endurance. That's a lie. That's a lie. According to Breaking Israel News, they stated a reconstructed Ark of Palmyra, the original of which was the entrance to a temple, in, a temple for Baal in Syria, will reappear in Washington, D.C. as an improbable symbol of peace and resilience. The original in the Middle East was destroyed by ISIS in October 2015, but it was recreated by the Institute for Digital Archaeology using 3D printing technology. WND reported last year when the Ark was in New York City and London, and later when it was placed outside a global summit in Dubai. More recently, it was constructed for the G7 summit in Florence, Italy. It will be up for five days at the end of this month, and then it will be taken down. Now, this ark stood in front of the ancient Temple of Bel, and that temple was later converted first into a church and then subsequently into an Islamic mosque. What makes all of this far more alarming, my friends, for our day and time is the fact that a number of prominent scholars, such as Tom Horn, Dr. Michael Lake, and Peter Goodgame are convinced that there seems to be a very strong link in the scriptures between the coming Antichrist and the historical figure of God. Could it be possible that we are erecting these symbols, that we are laying out welcome mats for the Antichrist? For those that are familiar with the Bible, you already know that Baal worship is mentioned extensively throughout the second half of the Old Testament. The worship of Baal involved very sick and very twisted acts. And the truth is that Baal is mentioned in the Bible more than 100 times. A very high percentage of current world religions can be traced directly back to this ancient deity and to this ancient Babylon. And the practices involved in ancient bio worship are eerily similar to things that go on in today's society. The following comes from an excellent article by Matt Barber. Ritualistic bio worship in some looked a little like this. Adults would gather around the altar of bio. Infants would be burned alive as a sacrificial offering to deity amid horrific screams and the stench of charred human flesh. Congregants, men and women alike, would engage in bisexual orgies. The ritual of convenience was intended to produce economic prosperity by prompting Bael to bring rain for the fertility of Mother Earth. The natural consequences of such behavior, pregnancy and childbirth, and the associated financial burdens of unplanned parenthood were easily offset. One could either choose to engage in homosexual conduct or witch house sacrifice available on demand could simply take part in another fertility ceremony to terminate the unwanted child. <coughs> Modern liberalism deviates little from its ancient predecessor. While its, macabre, which is, while its macabre rituals have been sanitized with flowery and euphemistic terms of art, its core tenets and practices remain eerily similar. We tend to think that we are vastly more advanced than the pagan idol worshippers of the ancient world, but that really isn't the case. They killed their babies by the thousands, and this world, this society, have killed our babies by the millions. They had free love around the altars of Baal, but we have turned it into a permanent lifestyle. Multitudes would gather around the altars of Baal to watch the bisexual orgies, but we have turned watching others having sex into a multi-billion dollar industry. It's quite interesting that this monument to Baal, as you see right here, 
will be going up during the time that the confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh is being debated in Washington. Could it be possible that those that are seeking to keep child sacrifice legal in America are seeking some supernatural help from demonic entities? Is that the real reason why this monument is being erected at this present time? Time will tell. Actually, time is very telling. We're living in the last days, folks. It's not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. It is a privilege, a pleasure, and honor to bring to you the Word of God, breaking world news headlines, matching biblical prophecy. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay, you know how you stay safe? You stay hidden in Jesus Christ. Stay hidden in Jesus Christ. I want to ask that you take a moment to visit our website at www.openyoureyespeople.com and you place a donation in helping support the work of this end time ministry. Your support helps make these broadcasts possible. It's as simple as that. I appreciate your prayers. Your prayers are vital. They're crucial in helping support the work of this end time ministry. But I also ask that you back up the precious word, the precious prayers of faith with action. Help support the work with a financial donation. I give God praise for all that he's doing in these last days through you, through me, through others who fear the Lord, who name the name of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and is willing to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ until the day of the Lord. Thank you again for tuning in. God bless you. Visit our website, get more information about who we are and what we do at www.openyoureyespeople.com, www.openyoureyespeople.com. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 218, Shirts, Texas 78154. Until next week, may God richly bless you. Walk in the Spirit. You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk by faith and not by sight. God's perfect love casts out all fear. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The days are getting darker, and the times of the end is without a doubt upon us. The rescue mission that we are on to save souls in this world is urgent. But I must be straight with you. We find our ministry right now in a type of rescue mission in this present hour. Friends, we have a right now urgent financial need to help continue this important work. We do not have mega corporations or government grants helping our ministry in any way unlike many churches of today. But we like it that way because it keeps the word of God free from compromise and reproach in this end time ministerial work. Now, of course, that does not mean that we are free from financial obligation that must be met on a monthly basis to keep our online church ministry, our broadcasting, our school of ministry, our websites and servers, and, and basic expenses to keep this needed ministry going strong. It means not going your way anymore. It means not trusting in your own efforts. Some of you say, you know what, I think that if I was to die tonight, I think I'd make it. Nowhere in the Bible does Jesus Christ is Lord, and he is coming very quickly. He's going to plow in this end-time harvest. Folks, we're plowing in the end-time harvest. We're plowing. We're not looking back. We're plowing in the name of Jesus. Put your hand next to us and plow right along with us so that we can get this work done. And that is where you, our precious viewers and partners, come in. Friends, I'm asking for your financial support to give to the work of this end time ministry as best as you can in a way that you have not done before or maybe ever done before. Now, I've always said no donation is too small or too large to help support the work of this ministry, and I mean it. Of course, however, the more generous amount you can give brings much more of an immediate relief to our need. Friends, we offer no gimmicks for your donations, but what we do promise is kingdom results. We promise to continue sounding the alarm that the day of the Lord is at hand. We promise to preach the word of God by the power of God's Holy Spirit, unadulterated and uncompromising to a lost and dying world. We promise to teach the word of God in sincerity of truth and the fear of God. Can we depend on you today? 
please give securely on our website at www.emoaf.org www.emoaf.org I'll even ask, would you consider being a monthly donor? Friends, I don't mean for this request to be so lengthy, and I certainly did not expect to bring a broadcast like this, but for the ministry's sake, I'm glad. And I give God praise that he has graced me to humble myself by his Holy Spirit to do so. It is in great reverence and respect in the fear of the Lord and his Holy Spirit. Thank you for hearing me and for helping support the work.